Now we will move on to the determination of CT performance. We have five steps to determine the CT performance. In the step one, we assume a CT secondary output current I dash. Secondary output current in the sense I dash is the current that is seen by the relay. That is from I dash plus IE, IE is the excitation current. If that is detected, the remaining is I dash, which is seen by the relay. Now, in step two, we are going to compute E dash, the secondary voltage E dash, which is equal to Z dash plus ZB into I dash. Z dash is the impedance of the sensing device or the relay. No, ZB is the impedance of the sensing device uh, or the relay. Z dash is the leakage reactance. From the equivalent circuit, we can see that. We'll see the equivalent circuit here. Z dash is the leakage reactance and ZB is the burden or the impedance of the uh, sensing device. So I dash plus IE is the actual secondary current. From this IE is detected, which is the excitation current and I dash is only seen by the relay. So if there is uh, a high difference, um, if there is a big difference between I dash and I dash plus IE, this I dash may not reflect the actual fault current I because basically the secondary current should uh, reproduce the fault current at a scale down level. That will not happen. If that is not happening, the protection system may not uh, operate properly. So that is what we are trying to analyze. Now, uh, using E dash, how, how will you find IE? We have the excitation curve with us. From there, we can uh, find IE corresponding to E dash. We will see the excitation curve here. This is taken from the Westinghouse relay manual. Um, this is given in the book on power system analysis and design by Duncan Thomas Overby and Sharma. Uh, so you can go through it. So we have here secondary exciting amps versus secondary exciting voltage. Uh, if we know the E dash corresponding IE value could be taken from any of these curves. These curves correspond to different CTs with different current ratios. So whichever is your CT, you go to that particular plot. This is a characteristic of the CT, which is uh, taken from the manual. So the corresponding IE can be uh, taken from here um, and that can be substituted here. Here, that can be substituted here. So to compute I, I is the primary current. The primary current equals turns into I dash plus IE because uh, one of the turns is assumed to be one. That is why this is N into I dash plus IE. IE you are getting from the plot. I dash you are assuming the arbitrary value is assumed and into N will give you the primary current I. So you know I dash and I now. So for different I dash, you will get different I values. So you can have a plot between I dash and I. So repeat steps one to four for different I dash values and then plot I dash versus I. Thus we get the uh, an idea of uh, the performance of the CT. Because what should be um, uh, the the uh, the difference should be small, right? The difference between I dash and I should be small. A difference in the sense I, I dash is at a different level. Of course, I dash is at a scale down level and I is the actual fault current. But uh, there is a threshold for I at which the relay should operate, right? There is a corresponding threshold in the level of I dash or, or at a lower level I dash at, at which the relay should operate. So this difference should be small, right? Because of the high value of IE, it should not uh, reproduce an inaccurate current in the secondary or an inaccurate current that is seen by the relay. So to get that, we are finding the error in percentage. The CT error in percentage is equal to IE divided by I dash plus IE. OK, so if IE is high, it is, if this is very high, then CT error will be more because I dash will not reflect the I dash may not reflect the actual fault current in the power system. So now we'll uh, uh, go through some examples to illustrate this in a better way. Thank you.